Welcome to CRE Fast Five, where we detail hot topics in commercial real estate in five minutes or less. I'm Carly Iacono, and tonight we're talking about high growth markets. Most investors come to me with a thought process that they need an asset between one and two hours of their home. They want to be able to go touch the bricks, check in on the tenant, and make sure everything is going okay. Now, while there is nothing wrong with this investment strategy, very often the best deals are not right in your backyard. So tonight I want to talk about some demographic shifts that we're seeing around the country and give you some markets to pay attention to that you might not have previously thought of. So let's start with a list of income tax free states. There are currently seven states that do not have a state income tax and they are Alaska, Florida, Nevada, South Dakota, Texas, Washington, and Wyoming. And there are two more, New Hampshire and Tennessee, which do not tax wages, but do tax other types of earnings. It's rumored that that might be changing in the next few years, so we could have a full list of nine in the not too distant future. Now I bring up this list because it is often a focus for clients to really seek out a property in an income tax free state. Now, my understanding is that if you do not live in the state already and your property is not located in the same state in which you live, then the benefits are really basically none from a tax perspective. But please confer with your accountant and make sure that that is the case for you personally. If that is the case, then I would have this as a checkbox with maybe some marginal benefit from a resale perspective, but I would not limit yourself to only considering states or markets that are in income tax free states. So keep that in mind, put it on your list, but don't make it a necessity unless your accountant tells you otherwise for your own personal reasons. Now let's look at the period of demographic change from 2010 to 2020. If we examine cities with 50,000 people or more, we see some really interesting trends emerge. So during that 10 year time period, the South grew 11.8%. Western cities grew 9.1%. Midwest grew 3.1% and the Northeast grew 1.5%. So a tremendous difference between the growth in population density that we're seeing in the Southeast versus the Northeast. Now I'll pause here for a moment and remind you that New York is still without question the most populated city in our country with 8.9 million residents in 2019. So there will continue to be exceptional demand in the tri-state area because there's just incredible population base to support all of these retailers, medical net lease, et cetera. However, where we're seeing a lot of the new builds and where we're seeing some of these new concepts emerge are in the Southern states. And that's not only because of the increased demand from housing, which then of course leads to the ancillary services, but also because development is a lot easier. So a lot of our fast food restaurants are coming out in the Southeast. Their sales are incredible. We have some really nice deals going under contract in those markets. Um, and of course we have wonderful relationships in the Northeast. We have some great inventory on market and coming to market, but the development process is much harder. So you're gonna see less deal flow and probably even more aggressive pricing in the Northeast because of the limited inventory. So within those high growth markets, there's really a few standout cities that I wanna to touch on now. And again, we're looking at the period of time from 2010 to 2020. Number one in growth was Austin, Texas with 29.8% population growth. Not too far behind was Orlando, Florida at 22.2%. And then Dallas, Phoenix, Charlotte, and Nashville all came in within 17 to 19% growth. These are phenomenal numbers. So of course, within all of this growth, we're gonna have a, a trickle down effect from housing to, like I mentioned, hospitals, medical net lease, all the services that go with it, and a lot of demand uh, also. So again, location, location, location for real estate, but it's not the only thing. So if you are exploring one of these markets, be very careful that the rent your tenant is paying is not too out of line with market rent. 
Consider all the other factors that we touch on many times, your tenant, your guarantor, your lease term, your position within that individual market, et cetera. Smart decisions from a long-term investment perspective are made when all of these factors come together and make sense. If you are considering a new market, we have tremendous data on markets all over the country. Feel free to give us a call. We can help you dive in a little bit deeper. That was CRE Fast Five. I'm Carly Iacono. I look forward to seeing you again soon.